fun to look at the books. It's just like a whole world. Like I was really possessive about this. I think this was my first one, so it's got my name in it like 10 times. You ready? I'm ready. Ed Emberley. This is a big one for me because he, um, I have a ton of his books, but when I was a kid, like, I think there was sort of like two, at least um, in my mind, there was like two battling how to draw books. And there was the Lee J. Ames, how to draw like a horse or how to draw Yoda or like how to draw something that was realistic. And then there was like the Ed Emberley books, which were, um, you know, you've probably seen it because he, I think he pioneered this and everyone's kind of taken it and run with it. But it's like a comic strip of how to draw using just symbols. Talk to you about creating a world and, and just using these really simple shapes to, to make characters. Tons of like the old zines of King Cat. When I first found out about zines like in the 90s, he was like the biggest inspiration to me. And he had a really small catalog that was just like hand-picked, cool, cool, very like sincere things that people were making yeah. and before, before the internet and all the other easier ways to connect with people, like you had to do it through the mail and you know, Xerox it and fold it and put a stamp on it and send it out. And I lived in the middle of nowhere, so to get cool stuff like that was like a big deal to me. You don't, there's not enough people doing it that way, I think, creating their art in this way that is um, just so personal and so humble. Calder Circus. I mean, this is just, still always makes my heart jump. Uh, we went to the Paul Clay Museum and I saw a bunch of the puppets he made. This book was like huge for me. This is before I knew about zines or anything. It has all these like comics that kids drew and, and it sort of just gave the uh, impression that you know you could just get started and make your own thing, make copies for your friends. This is just a book that I always loved. Wait. Oh yeah, that's printed. I thought maybe I did it. But just kind of like, just throwing stuff down and seeing what, what you can make out of it. These books were, were big for me when I was little. Homeschooled for part of my childhood and uh, my mom was like really involved with uh, getting us cool books to read. And I, I grew up like, um, on like a street that didn't have a lot of kids. So to me, this was like kind of a fantasy of like, man, like somewhere out there, there's just like all these crazy kids that get together and just like bang on, on like wash tubs and play cigar box banjos and stuff. Roger Miller is like one of my favorite singers. And he, uh, I mean, first for most people, they know him as the rooster in Robin Hood. The songs in, in the Robin Hood cartoon, which when I was a kid, I watched it over and over again. Kind of had a lot of like heart and soul in it. And they'll be funny, but they'll be really poetic and they'll just get to, they'll just kind of like touch on that emotion and really like hit you. 